guys, alexfeistopro.com and today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to talk about some of the things in the man cave that you're going to come across and some of the things that I've come across over 30 years of training which might be useful for you today. So I'm going to talk about the things that people never told you. I'm going to talk about the things that people just didn't mention. I don't think it's any kind of major league conspiracy as to why they didn't do this. I just think it just didn't happen. And one of these is how to use a heavy bag right. Now, I'm not going to show you techniques here. There are thousands and thousands of bag, bag videos on the internet. Some are good, some are appalling, some are average. But on the whole, on 30 years of training, I don't remember anybody showing me a set of drills specifically to use on a heavy bag. Now, I remember actually teaching a bunch of my guys specific drills to do on a heavy bag after I worked them out in conjunction to the techniques that I had learned over many years in boxing, in Wing Chun, in kickboxing and so on in Muay Thai. My Muay Thai coach once gave me a warm-up drill which was kicking the bag so many times on either side of the bag switching to the low point. I have been shown how to low point kick on a bag but that's one specific technique. It's not like how to use the bag as a piece of training kit. And I think that that's in a way a little weird. I've seen all sorts of drills on how to use focus mitts correctly. And over time, I think people do pick this up. People develop different styles. But largely, I don't see a lot of people being trained on how to use focus mitts. I've trained in at least half a dozen specific boxing gyms over from, from being in my late teens, you know, 16, 17, right the way through to my 40s. And... I don't remember anyone stopping the class and saying, right, we're going to do this drill on this bag. I want everybody to learn this drill. And they will do that in martial arts classes in terms of let's learn this particular technique and let's drill it. Let's do a partner technique and drill it. But heavy bags have particular properties. They don't move exactly the same as a human being. They don't feel exactly the same as a human being. They don't target exactly the same as a human being. They don't react to your shots the same as a human being. So they are only a tool and they are used for very specific purposes. You should be using footwork, you should be using distancing, you should be working out drills that you're going to do with a heavy bag and not just wail on it. And that is one of the things that I see all the time. People just hitting it with any old thing, and then they'll transfer that to sparring or even fighting, and it doesn't work because the person in front of them doesn't react the same way as a bag does. But you're pre-programming your ability to do certain things, and if you do something enough, if you target a bag or you do a combination on a bag constantly and consistently, then you are programming your, your nervous system to actually do that. And I used to talk about all this, this all the time with my students about clutch break, clutch break, emergency stop, right? If you do it over and over and over, when you speed it up, it just happens. And that's how you're taught to do an emergency stop in a car. But quite often these principles aren't then taken over into combat sports. So here are my three tips to make this situation better. For tip number one is take the drills that you've been shown in class, slow them right down, and break them down in conjunction with your bag. So work out the footwork exactly. Draw lines on the floor if need be. I saw Customato do that with Tyson. And work out an exact drill and do full rounds of that drill with your heavy bag. I did this a lot in, in my time too. No, tip number two, if you're going to use videos off the internet, Use videos from guys with serious credibility as a coach. And I mean as a coach, not necessarily as a fighter. Some coaches were great fighters and some fighters turn into great coaches, but they don't always work out this way. Some of the best coaches in the world right now had very minimal fight careers. Mark Della Grotti, Greg Jackson... We, we can go over a bunch of these guys who weren't big, huge champions. Nobody would really known about them. And a lot of these guys just fought for the experience of doing it and then turned into absolutely amazing coaches. So the fight, a great fighter doesn't make a great coach. And a great coach doesn't always make a great fighter. It can happen. But go out and find the very best guys you possibly can to learn from. 
both physically in the real world and on the internet. Tip number two, three, final tip, is use the right equipment when you're using a bag and treat it as if you were training in class. Don't just switch your brain off, wail on it to some tunes, do out your five, ten rounds, whatever you do, and then, and then think you've really done anything. You may have had a fitness workout, which is absolutely fine, but if you're looking to actually improve your skills, then switch your brain on and work your bag technically. Hope you enjoyed this. See you on the next one. Mm -hmm.